Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we just invite you in this space, Lord, as we already have done. Uh, Lord, I know that as soon as, as soon as I stop talking, I take your absolute perfect word and it's no longer perfect. But Lord, you're a good God and you're a gracious God. And as the Bible says, your mercies are anew every single morning. So Lord, we want to call upon you today and ask for you to touch our hearts and our minds and our souls. Lord, that you'll encourage us, equip us, challenge us. Uh, what it means to be in the image of your Son and the gloriousness of your character. I pray, Lord, as we talk about these themes today, as we finish up the Song of Solomon series, Lord, we want to stop for a moment and say thank you for what you've done already and the testimonies that we've had uh, coming out of this. But also, Lord, we want to pray just for today. That will be your word speaking, not mine. Uh, Lord, that you'll connect uh, with everyone here in their own individual way, in their complicated lives. The Holy Spirit knows intimately and can speak to directly I pray for that for our kids as well. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so here we are. We're coming to the end. We're going to be in chapters 6 and 7 of Song of Solomon. Uh, if you're a visitor or if you're a first time here, I just want to say a special welcome to you. It's great to be here. You're part of the family. Uh, downstairs we have ice cream. Unfortunately, though, it is our last time doing ice cream. So uh, I know you're sad. If you're a parent, you're like, yes, praise the Lord. <laughs> No more sugar crashing, <laughs> and uh, I know we've been struggling with that a bit. Um, so we, uh, we had my son's birthday yesterday. He turned seven, and so he ate like a half a cake, and um, so he's been sugar crashing all weekend. It's been great. Uh, but yeah, so our last one, and this time our, uh, our ice cream flavor is vanilla. Now, I know what you're thinking. No one's cheering for that. I don't, you're, uh, you're like, we've had all these great ice cream flavors, and then we get to vanilla. Why are we saving just for vanilla for last. You think you'd save like the best for last, but that's what we're going to talk about today. How do we do life with God and how do we do life in our relationships that we're in when it's just vanilla? It's just classic vanilla. There's nothing exciting going on. There's nothing traumatic going on. It's just, we're just streamlining vanilla. And that can be uh, quite a challenge. I think if we can get that right, we're going to get a lot of things right. Uh, so what do we do here at the Church of Christ, we just get in the Word, and we start going for it verse by verse. Uh, what we're going to do a bit today, though, is I'm going to probably read kind of chunks, and we're going to talk about them in concepts, uh, and some of this we've already dealt with a bit. So today, our title here is The Old and the New, and uh, we'll talk kind of more about what that means later, but I know this is what God wants for us for today. I started seeing this everywhere, like I'm going to random offices, and there's books and uh, magazines, and they're just like old and new, and I was like, all right, Lord, easy. My job's easy when he does the whole thing for me. So we'll get started with this. Um, I think I've swapped a whole song. Here we go. Okay. I was like, that's not the Bible. I don't know what I'm talking about there. All right. So this is uh, Solomon talking to his bride. And he, uh, you know, he's just he's a bit of a charmer, says all these nice things. And sometimes it's a bit weird. I've been trialing them on my wife, including this week. And I'll tell you how that went in a second. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty funny. Um, so he says, you're beautiful as Terza, my darling, as lovely as Jerusalem, as awesome as an army with banners. I don't know what that means. I wish I could tell you what that means. But uh, I, if I told my wife she looked like an army with banners, uh, it's not going to be a much of a compliment. We're going to see why this kind of matters later on. So he starts off well. He starts off with something new. However, he says, turn your eyes from me, for they have confused me. This is what happens when I use Solomon's words on my wife. I'm like, she's like, the eyes are very confusing. She's like, get away from me, man. I don't know what you're talking about. And so he goes back to his classic lines. He's like, there's these certain go-to lines, these pickup lines that Solomon used that worked. So he's going back, to the, going back to the old, the same old, same old. Your hair is like a flock of goats because he knows that'll get her. That'll get her in the mood real quick. They have descended from Gilead or in other versions of this a previous chapter. It's Mount Gilead. This is my favorite one. Your teeth are like a flock of ewes, which have come up from their washing, all of which bear twins. Not one of them has lost her young. He's like, man, your teeth are white, and you have every single one of them. That's so cool. And uh, so we've seen this. This is the third time we've seen it. Nothing new here. It's just old. Like This is like every single day I tell my wife I love her. But me telling her I love her today doesn't quite have the same impact as the very first time I told her I loved her. And uh, I can't expect that same response, right? It's just what we do. It's just vanilla. Now when I say I love you, it's almost out one ear. 
right? And now I, I have to do something really special for it to kind of sink in, have meaning. Uh, so it's, it gets old. And on our, on our relationships uh, with the people that we're in, what, I've, what oftentimes happens is that most of us are not good at doing vanilla. We like it when it's exciting. And relationships are fun. We go on vacations or you have a weekend away or you have a reunion, which may be good, may not be good. Uh, and we get together. We have these great times. We look to do special things because we're so bored with our relationship that we need a way to kind of, as they say, spice it up. So we've got to do all these different things, go on these trips, do this awesome stuff, try new things. When in reality, it's because we actually are afraid to sit down and actually have a conversation with each other and just just be in each other's presence. And I love how the gospel overlays all this where Jesus uh, loves us so much, but when I tell you Jesus loves you, does that mean much to you anymore? Has it lost meaning because it's just the same old symbol? Every week you hear Jesus loves you, that he saved you from your sins. Oh, yeah, that's okay. It's amazing. And may we never forget it. And, but the reality of is that our lives with God is normally just classic vanilla. Sometimes we have these amazing testimonies, praise the Lord. And our lives are on this spiritual high where you're like, man, God's doing awesome, awesome things. Last week, I felt those prayers. I literally told David, I was like, I feel weird this week. I got like this, this glowing orb of spiritualness, I don't even know what to call it, around me. I was like, this is awesome. I want to feel this way all the time. And I'm on that spiritual high. But the reality is I'm not there all the time. Uh, and it's, uh, it's easy to sometimes trust God when things are awesome. And our relationship with God is awesome. But then if it's just day to day, as you're eating your breakfast, the same cereal you've eaten for the last 40 years, is God still there? As you show up to work, the same job you've been doing for 35 years, same boss, you're like, man, oh, this boss should have left a long time ago. Same old, same old. Dropping the kids off, another meal you make, more homework to do, another poo you've changed that day. Sometimes four or five. Thank goodness, praise the Lord, I'm done with that stage. <laughs> I'll be in that stage at some point again when you know, people get older and they get diapers again and you repeat the cycle, but... Uh, what am I talking? Why am I saying that? Uh, anyway, so it's, but there's, there's, this, there's this awesomeness about if you can worship God in the monotony of your life, it'll really make a profound impact on your life. God is not just there on top of Mount Gilead or on top of Jericho. It's in the, hey, I'm just cooking vegetables. And God is rich. He is there. He is trying to communicate. He loves you. He's caring for you in the same old, same old. Some of us, though, so if we had to like break it down, let's say... You know, 10 to 15% of our life is just awesome. The spiritual is just awesome. You know, you're yelling at the walls of Jericho and things are coming down. And you're like, man, this is awesome. And then the problem, though, is on the flip side, about 10 to 15% of your life is just, you're like Job. You're like, cursed be the day I was born. May nobody be born on this day because it's so unlucky. Life is horrible, right? And you've probably been there. Those desert times, you're like, man, life is horrible. And, uh, and sometimes in our relationships, because we're not okay doing the classic vanilla, some of y'all will create drama, create ish problems just to make you feel like you're alive. So there's something worth talking about. You can't just simply exist in that space with your partner or your friends or your children. And so it's like, this is too boring. I will, instead of trying to create a, a great time, we will do the opposite. We'll go down to create drama just so we have drama in our life. Uh, um, I, I don't like drama, okay? I was, had to do, literally do drama class against my will. All right? It was child abuse. My mom was like, you have to do some drama, Kevin. I was like, but why? I like being by myself in my room. She's like, that's why. So she put me on the drama team against my will. And it's funny <laughs> because I got a part in the, in the play. Uh, this is um, Much Ado About Nothing. And Benedict literally says, against my will, I come to bid you come to dinner. So my line in the play literally was against my will, I bid you come to dinner. And I had a blast. I had so much fun. Uh, then I did drama for the next, the rest of my high school. Uh, so anyway, God, God had a funny, funny uh, plan there with my, wa- with my mom getting me to do that. But that's kind of beside the point. The real point, though, is what, if you're afraid to just be in each other's presence, and that can't be rich, just having a conversation at the end of the day with no movies, to distract you, no kids, it's just, just you and I, how was your day? Can that be exciting enough for you? Because that's your relationship with God most of the time. 
Sometimes we're in that desert time and, and you're in that 15% where life is horrible. You're like Job. And some of you are like, man, that's where I thrive with God. You can do the pain and suffering really well. <laughs> You've had a lot of pain and suffering, and you and God, you just get in that zone. Your prayer life is active. Your focus, your theology has this great way to handle pain and suffering, and you can do it. Some people can't, but maybe you can. And maybe you don't even know what it's like to have a relationship with God if you're not suffering. You have a hard time just having that bagel with Jesus. Because you have to have something to worry about or something to fret about so that you feel like you have a real relation with God. And so I think as we go through this, we're, to, we're at the same old, same old. Can we just do this and just enjoy it in that still small voice, in that still small space? Or do we have to add, this is why we're doing classic vanilla today. You're like, classic vanilla is boring. Yeah, well, life is classic vanilla, most of it. And like for me, if we make pasta, it's just boring. I have to add some spice. I'll go get the... Um, uh, what's it, anything, it doesn't matter, I can't remember what it was, but something to make it uh, spicy and hot, so I'll just add, yeah, it's like chili flakes, or I'll just dump some of those, because I want it spicy, I like it hot. Um, I won't purposely burn it to make it bad, so I'm not, I'm not a psychopath, uh, but yeah, so I, and, and I find that with my life with Jesus, I was, I had done the pain and suffering for so long, and that finally finished, and I was like, God, can I just enjoy you here? And it was hard. It was hard because I realized that my relation with God was duct taped together with the pain and suffering and the hope that God could do something good. And then when God finally did something good, yes, I was celebrating, but then I found the day-to-day, -day, I was like, I don't know if I can do this. I'm not hoping for anything else. I was only going to God. And it was driving my relation with God because I was hoping for something better. And now I was like, I am in the better. Okay, now what, God? And he's like, can we just enjoy each other as a son and a father? Yes, and it's rich. It's awesome. All right, so here we are. This is his, his response. He's doing the same old, same old. So what's her response? Oh, this is the, he says, your temples are like a slice of pomegranate. He said that multiple times as well. So here's what happens. Uh, after he says those lines, he's like, check. I've done my, my husband duty. I've wooed my wife with these sweet words. <laughs> he's like, I went down to the orchard of nut trees to see whether the vine had grown or the pomegranates had bloomed. Before I was aware, my soul set me over the chariots of my noble people. So he's like, <laughs> I said the right words. I'm going to work. And he's like, I'm awesome, by the way. And he's like totally oblivious to where his wife's at or what she's thinking. He says, I love you, honey. You look great today. Awesome. Goes to work. And he's like, man, I'm so good at this. And he's Solomon. Like, he's good. He can say that. And so what, <laughs> what she does this is the chorus of the people. This is the third parties that kind of show up occasionally. It says, come back, come back, O Shulamite. Come back, come back, that we may gaze at you. She walks off. <laughs> She's like, God, oh, this guy. <sighs> you know, when we were dating, it was all nice. He had all these great things to do. When I was dating Debbie, it was like, I had one elder come to me at church. He's like, Kevin, you got to tone it down. You're making the rest of us look bad. You're making all the married guys look bad because you're just dating her so well. And then we got married, and then I became the, that other guy. I became the married guy. It's like no longer does the dates, no longer does the awesome helicopter rides. Not that we did that, but that's kind of like, you know, you do all this effort. And she's like, you do all the effort, but now you're just the same old line, man. Come on, dude. You're the wisest guy in the world, and you can't find a different line to use? And she walks off. And so the people are like, come back. No, this isn't working. She's not okay with the vanilla. She's like, Man, I want, I want something else. Fair enough. That's okay. It's not bad to want something more. I don't think if, like for some people, you might be scared to do something new and exciting with God. You like the vanilla, and you're the monk that says, every day I can do this because it's safe. We'll talk about that more in a second. So uh, come back, come back, Shulamite. So she walks off. Um, and so uh, then we get to chapter 7, verse 1. So Solomon decides, all right, we've got to go back and do something different. He's like, uh, this is like the anniversary. That's his mind. He's like, I got I to gotta step up my game. And so he does something different. He does something new. How beautiful are your feet. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. I love Solomon. Like, if I said this to my wife, she's like, why are you looking at my feet? This, is, this would be the opposite of, of exciting. <laughs> How beautiful are your feet in sandals, O prince's daughter. The curves of your hips are like jewels. The work of the hands of an artist. Your navel is like a round goblet, which never lacks mixed wine. 
Your belly is like a heap of wheat. <laughs> oh, man, that's good. I tell you what, it's in the Bible. This is, this is, this is, this is good stuff. Yeah, it is weird. Eh? Fenced about with lilies. So what's interesting, though, is he's doing something new. All these phrases we haven't seen before, but also the other two times he's talked about her body, he starts with the hair and the head, and he works his way down. But now he's starting at the feet, and he's working his way up. <laughs> it's not that different, but it's new. Hey, you know what? Sometimes when the guy, he just does a little bit. Hey, he put in some effort. Sometimes, hey, dude, you just got to put in a little bit of effort, man. And it's like, hey, it's not the normal flower. It's a different flower, okay? Well, hey, look, hey, put in some effort. Good on you. So he's doing something new. It's still basically the same. She hasn't changed at all, right? She hasn't changed at all, but his relationship is changing as he's changing what he's saying to her. Something new is happening. Your two hills, the word there isn't hills, but I've already done that sermon, okay? So I'm just keeping it really G-rated, all right? <laughs> We've already done that. Your two hills are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle. Your neck is like a tower of ivory. Your eyes are like the pools of Heshbon by the gate of bath Rabin. And then he says, your nose is like, <laughs> and uh, this is what I practiced on my wife this week. <laughs> but uh, I love this phrase because, like, no matter what comes after this, it's bad. <laughs> like, there's never a phrase, as I was thinking, your nose is like, she's like, don't, don't you finish that phrase. <laughs> There's nothing I could say that would possibly be good behind this phrase, right? So anyway, <laughs> I love it. Just don't talk about women's noses. There's no reason to talk about women's noses. Your nose is like the Tower of Lebanon, which faces towards Damascus, <laughs> which sounds like you have this giant-ass nose, right? <laughs> but uh, what he's, I think what he's trying to say is it's a tower. It's, not, it's strong. It's straight. It's not crooked or curved. Uh, when I was in uni, I, I played flag football, and, uh, and I, ironically, I was coming from a drama play, which I don't do, do anymore, but I, got, I was, got on the field, the ball was kicking me, I'm running, and the guy tackles me, and there was this foot that went right through my nose, and my nose was literally on this side of my face. I was like a cartoon, and just blood just gushing everywhere, and, and then the ref had the audacity to give me the penalty, like I did something wrong. I was more upset about that than missing a nose, but anyway, so they took me to the to the to the, well, not in an ambus, but to the ER. And then uh, a week later, they did surgery and kind of fixed it. It's still slightly crooked, but you have to look super closely, so don't, don't do that. Um, but he's like, your nose is, it's sharp, it's pointed, it's focused, it's strong. Looking, which faces toward Damascus, which where the enemies were. Um, so some people are thinking that uh, maybe, you know, the nose kind of smells danger. You kind of walk in a room, you can smell something like something's not right. Some food's gone bad, or there's some chemicals that shouldn't be here. It's kind of like your warning sign, and so that's what maybe he's saying. I don't know. Um, we can ask him when he gets to heaven what he meant by that. Uh, so your nose like the Tower of Lebanon, which faces towards Damascus. Your head crowns you like caramel, and the flowing locks of your head are like purple threads. The king is captivated by your tresses. How beautiful you are, how delightful you are, my love, with all your charms. So he goes entirely new on her, and he does something awesome. And I want to challenge us that uh, for some of us, we, we like the classic vanilla. We get scared of something new. But God is oftentimes doing something great in the newness. And oftentimes in our relationship, I mean, if you've been in a relationship for a long time, do you do anything new? Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. But, you know, you can do that. It's not necessarily on your partner. You, like, you can create newness. That's amazing. What God, God created everything as new. And he's given us the ability and power to do that as well. Um, I had one of the old things in my family, and as a, as a, I say the Dunn family, my, my, me and my kids, uh, we, uh, I don't do dad jokes all that often, okay? And there's nothing old like a dad joke. Dad jokes are like one of the oldest things in existence. Uh, but we have my favorite dad joke of all time that I use all the time. This is nacho cheese Doritos. And I love this joke, right? You know what the joke is with nacho cheese? I'm sorry, you, you, were, you were looking at your head. I thought either you love the chips or you love the joke. And I was like, I hope he loves the joke. So this is nacho cheese. It's nacho cheese. It's nacho cheese. And my kids, they, they will just do this for like five minutes. Dad, it's not, not nacho cheese. It's nacho cheese. Yeah, it's nacho cheese. It's nacho cheese. It's nacho cheese. It's my cheese. And uh, so they do, it's just old, right? But doesn't mean, and if I come that, to your house and do that, you'd be like, this guy's weird. You know, and if you don't get the joke, don't worry too much. It's just a dad joke. You'll lose brain cells if you focus too much on it. Okay, uh, but but for my family, that oldness is special, 
It's kind of new to us. It's new just to our dynamic, but we've done it enough that it's special. So there is specialness in the old. There's, uh, I love how God incorporates the old and the new together where we literally have the old covenant and the new covenant, the Old Testament and the New Testament. New only has meaning and value when it's got the foundation of the old. Like, for example, uh, if you were on holiday every single moment for the next 10 years, that's not going to be good. You will drive yourself mental. It's like when you, uh, if you've ever been in lockdown for a couple weeks or a week or you've had quarantine, right? First day, great. I'm at home. This is awesome. This is new. It's awesome being home at quarantine because normally your life is busy and you're working or you're out. And that's, that's the old. So it's a transition to the new. Being at home, great. But by day five, day six, seven, day 14, day 28, you're like, I am over this. I'm going to burn the house to the ground so I can see the outside, Right? And no longer is that new exciting anymore. The new only has uh, excitement if it's compared with something before. Like the New Testament doesn't make any sense of its own if we don't know the old story of how sin got here and why we needed a Savior. Heaven only has a, a meaning and value because we've lived on a place that's not heaven. My, uh, God, my relation with God, the, when God does something new, when He shows you a new thing, it's awesome because you're, you've learned it. But if God had given you everything that he showed you at the very beginning, day one, you would never have that excitement of, guess what? Guess what God did for my life? Guess what he showed me? I had this new revelation. So there's this balance of celebrating the old, enjoying the new. I was driving yesterday when we had the rain coming yesterday, and I saw, I saw a rainbow. It was this big rainbow in the sky. And there's literally nothing older sign than a rainbow. It's like the oldest sign we have, <laughs> going 4,000, 5,000 years ago. And I was like, that's pretty cool. What an old thing, but it's still cool. It still has, it's still special. This old thing is still special. And I was like, that's great. I can use it in my sermon. And then I turned the corner. You don't believe what I saw. You're going to think I was on drugs, but I wasn't, I promise. I saw a quadruple rainbow. A quadruple rainbow. I was like, am I going to heaven? Is this it? And was I in a car crash and now I'm just going to the gates of glory? It was a rainbow and then I, I couldn't see like a full four, you know, four rainbows. It was one rainbow with another one right beside it because I saw the purple and blue and whatever is it like green? I can't, I don't know. Anyway, so it was, I could see like two or three of the colors. And then behind that, another two of the same three colors. Behind that, another two. I was like, this is the most amazing thing ever. Have you seen the video of that guy who's like, oh, a double rainbow? Wow, if you haven't, don't worry about it. But I saw four, four rain, a quadruple. I will never see it again in my life. What a new thing to see. It was so awesome. And I was like, this is it. This is what's so cool about the old and the new coming together is, yes, you need to enjoy the classic vanilla. But hey, throw in some toppings once in a while. Make it nice. So we do have some toppings downstairs. Not, okay, that's not, we have like two toppings, okay? It's not like, it's not Subway, Okay. Yeah, don't, don't get your hopes up that much. We've got we to gotta save some new stuff for later. So here we go into the end. So here's her response. She's had a lot of the old. He throws in something a little bit new. And her response here is this. I am my beloved and my beloved's and his desires for me. Come, my beloved. Let us go out into the country. Let us spend the night in the villages. Let's do something new. Let us rise early and go to the vineyards. Let us see whether the vine has budded and its blossoms have opened and whether the pomegranates have bloomed. There I will give you my love. This, I've underlined this because these are the exact same phrases that showed up early in the chapter where he's like said his thing and I was like, all right, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to go see if all this stuff has happened. And then she's like, oh, whatever. She walks away from him, goes another way, comes back, changes his perspective a bit, and now she's like, all right, let's go. We're going to do something new. And we're going to go do something old. We're going to go see, see this work, see if, it's, see if it's blossomed, which ironically enough is an overlay of actually where their love is. Their love is blossoming as well, even though they've been married for who knows how long at this point. This is not the honeymoon. All right, this isn't the first date. They've been married for a while now, uh, and there's old and new. The mandrakes have given forth fragrance over our doors are all choice fruits. I love that phrase, over our doors are the choice fruits. It's very symbolic of uh, the lamb over the door for Exodus which was a sign of salvation for everyone in the Old Testament. Jesus hadn't come yet, uh, but it's pointing to Jesus even in this. Both new and old, which I have saved up for you, my beloved. And so that's where they go, and they, you know, they probably have a, a good time. <laughs> and uh, So the old and the new, they come together. 
And I just love this, uh, I think, in our lives where we look at, some of us are afraid to do old because it's too boring. But God's in that. He's in that. And some of us are afraid to do something new. Uh, we, lo- we find safety in the old. We find safety in our routines and our rhythms. But if we, don't, if we only stay in the old, we never get to experience God and what he has for us. That God does have new stuff he wants to show you. He has new stuff for you in your life. You're like, Kevin, I, <laughs> Kevin I'm, I'm, I'm 75. I'm retired. I, I don't want anything new in my life. New is bad. Maybe. But you could be in heaven right now, but you're not. So God is still showing you things. That this next month, this next year, maybe he has something new for you. Do you know, one of the things I pray on a Sunday when I come in, not, it's not very often, because normally it's just, Sundays are just classic vanilla. It's a Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. But some Sundays, we throw in a little bit of, um, uh, I can't remember, uh, what is that spiciness that I put on my sp- spaghetti? I can't remember. Um, anyway, we throw on some spice, right? And I, and I ask the Lord, I say, Lord, I pray that you'll do something new this Sunday. Do something I've never seen before. And more often than not, he does. I don't like to put a lot of parameters on it. I'm like, Lord, I'll, I'll, I'll know it when I see it. Do something I've never seen before. I've been in ch- church my whole life. Some, multiple Sundays sometimes. And I've done a lot of church. And, uh, but God still does something new. And I say, Lord, I want you to flex on me. You know, like when a guy at the gym, he's looking in the mirror, he's like, oh, I'm so strong. I'm like, God, I want to see that. I want to see you be strong in my life. Do something I've never seen before. Not because I need it. Okay, this is a big deal. There's a lot of people out there that have this kind of thought, oh, I need new divine revelation. I need a new revelation of God. And a lot of times I hear this phrase a lot. It's like some people need that new revelation because they can't handle the boringness of just doing life with God, which isn't boring at all. But it's like if our relationship is only going from excitement of God to another excitement of God, another excitement of God, then you're actually loving God out of a dysfunction. Right? Same thing with our relationships. If I'm moving to something new and something new and something new, it's actually because I'm dysfunctional in my relationship. I can't handle the richness of being quiet and being still with God. And there's much more about the Bible about being still and quiet and waiting on the Lord than there is about doing something new and exciting with the Lord. And oftentimes what it says is, as you wait on the Lord, then you will mount on wings like eagles. As you rest on the Lord, you will mount up on wings like eagles and you will run and not grow faint. You will walk and not get weary, grow weary. Maybe it's run, not grow weary, and walk and not faint. It doesn't matter, same thing. And so it's as we, uh, as we desire to the Lord, I want something new and something awesome. It's not out of a place I need it because we're good, God. I can enjoy you as father and son over our you know, terribly made Subway lunch that didn't put enough veggies on. I can enjoy you in that space. <laughs> but show me something new. Not because I need it, but because I want to see something awesome. And if you don't, that's okay. Because I'm not dependent on it. Um, just like I don't want to be dependent on the bad times. I don't want to be dependent on creating drama with God just so I have a sense of something happening in my life. So I really want to encourage you today as we wrap up here uh, in our relationships that where are you at in your relationship and what does it look like? Is there like a 30% pain and suffering <laughs> because we're creating drama in our life that doesn't need to be there? Relationships are already hard enough. Don't make them harder than they are. Uh, are we okay doing classic vanilla with our spouse? Are we okay just sitting there, enjoying each other's company? Uh, one of my favorite things to do with Deb is as we're about to go to bed, we're just we're talking about something random or whatever for a few minutes before we go to bed. I, I love that time. It's, it's ra- I don't like that time always when I'm doing other things because I'm trying to focus on something. And then she's like, Kevin, let's have a conversation about, you know, this, the shoes or something. And I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to do this. Uh, that's not, not as, as exciting. Uh, but it's, it's super important. I know that every day I need to have a quality conversation with my wife. She needs it, and I need it. We need that connection. Um, just like my kids, I want to ask them, hey, how was your day at school? How did you feel? Not just what did you do, but what was going on inside of you during the day? How can I connect with you there? Um, not, hey, did you eat your broccoli at lunch? Okay, good. All right, I'll see you at bedtime. You know, like... <laughs> Uh, or am I creating conflict with my kids just because I need someone to vent to? No, that's not fair to them. Um, and then I also have the trouble, too, of, of especially with the grandparents, I only want to have excitement with the grandkids, right? We can't just do classic vanilla. We have to always give them the sugar high. Can we please stop doing that? <laughs> anyway. Um, so I really want to challenge you in our personal relationships and the overlay of the gospel that God, yes, he's there with you at the hard times. He's there with you at the vanilla times. And he's there with you at exciting times. And so let's enjoy each of those as they're meant to be enjoyed. 
of a healthy diet of ice cream with the Lord. So this is our last one. Uh, let's pray, and we'll go downstairs. If you're new, please come downstairs. Enjoy ice cream with us. I'd uh, love to get to chat with you, know your name, where you're from, all that kind of stuff. Um, and we're just really, next week we are doing a, just a random kind of sermon on Luke 18 and 19. And then our next big series, though, will be Genesis, Jesus in Genesis. And I'm excited about that. We'll be tracking through some of these Old Testament stories, seeing where Jesus shows up and what God has for us, even though these stories are really, really old. I love it. The old and the new coming together in Genesis. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, I just thank you for today. I thank you, Lord, that there is a profoundness uh, that we can understand in the old and the new. Oh, Lord, that you had a certain way of doing things in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant. And now we don't have to do that anymore. We can praise you that the new is so much better than the old. And, Lord, I love that we can go back to the old, like in Genesis, and see the gospel. That we can see uh, our depravity. We can see that, Jesus, you are working to save lives and save sinners. That you give a hope and a future to people, even like me. And to even like everyone else here, Lord. I pray that you'll give us the courage to be able to sit and wait and just to be saying, hey, look, God, I've heard that you love me before, but I want there to be value. I want to be richness there. I don't want to just move on with my life and blow you off, God, that you're telling me something I already know. The reality is you tell me something I already know, but I've forgotten it the next week, so I need to be reminded again. That's why I need classic vanilla. I pray, Lord, that those who are going through a hard time, maybe they're not 10 or 15%, that you will be... uh, Jehovah Jireh in their life, Lord, the provider, the sustainer, the hope-filled grace, mercies anew every morning, kind of God that you are. And those, Lord, who you're, you are doing a great thing in their life and they're excited, I pray, Lord, that there won't be a sense of dysfunction there, that we can appreciate you for who you are, and not just because I need something from you to feel alive, but I am alive because Jesus died and rose again. So I pray all these things in Jesus' name, amen.